shit from my soul, this shit from my spirit. Can't go nowhere if he ain't got no vision. Bankroll, he brings, where do we start? But before we get into all of that, let's address the elephant in the room. How can countless aligning facts, number ties and every reference to it still be called a coincidence? The one thing we don't do here is fake the funk, or bring you phony information without providing substantial proof, so to all the naysayers, get up on game or stay in your lane. Now let's get down to business. It is real interesting just how carefully in place all this shit is. But let's just let it ride out with this. I'm just chilling and goddamn like five, I say five or ten minutes of me being in there, he approached me from behind, know what I'm saying? First thing he said was like, damn bro, why you let them put me out the nine? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, that shit old bro, I don't wanna hear about that shit, bro. Just keep on rapping, bro. Just got them don't do your thing, you feel me? So he was just so stuck on that old situation. He came straight down. You know what I'm saying? They said approached me with the situation. He was, he was talking a lot of shit, and I was like, bro, I ain't trying to hear that shit. So I, I turned around trying to, uh, I was finna leave. He tried to mush me. When he tried to mush me, I just grabbed him, you know what I'm saying? Like, grabbed him, and we tossed, we fell down the steps. And our childhood friend, C-Note, he, he broke the shit up, you know what I'm saying? Like, ASAP, you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't throw no punches. The altercation's over with, you feel me? I'm, I'm finna leave the studio, actually. I was leaving, because... This shit was so fucked up, I was like, bro, you don't fuck up, you don't try me in front of all these folks. Like, but I checked my pockets. So I guess when we fell down the steps, I dropped both of my phones inside the studio. And I pulled back up to the studio to get the cell phones. And I pulled back up to the studio to get the cell phones. Probably like 10 to 15 niggas, you know what I'm saying? All of them had guns, he had a stick, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't even that kind of situation, you know what I'm saying? He know I would never, like, just harm him like that, you feel me? Because I know his mama, I ain't even trying to be looking at his mama like, damn, mom, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, this one, I'm glad she just got some information about the situation. And he caused the situation to happen. You know what I'm saying? He came out with this gun and shit, and shit happened. You know what I'm saying? When he came out playing with the shit, like, just playing with the shit, he fired a shot and, and shit happened. We pulled off, we end up, he end up dead. And that simple the shit was, like, the shit was that simple. Like, he pulled the gun, shot the motherfucker. Couple shots got fired back, he got hit, I leave. Next thing you know, folks calling me saying fresh dead, you know what I'm saying? Go down to the homicide, tell Miss Benton everything, and shit, everything was great. But when did they fall down any steps, and how would he forget getting punched, because you can clearly see he got two hits to his body. Why is his story conflicting with the footage? Nothing with these stories add up. They play their role in the video footage, and then resort to the script to explain the incident. Bankroll showing resentment and despise for what happened made things escalate, and excited the situation just as 141 showed. I don't understand why it is so hard to believe that all these stories do is harvest energy, keep people believing in phony stories, it glorifies and excites people to want to be cool. The truth of the matter is these are characters being paid to live out personas. The definition of persona is the aspect of someone's character that is presented to or perceived by others. And the second being a role or character adopted by an author or an actor. Now let's see what's next. Continuing the trend we see again just how and why stories like these exist. The one thing many fail to understand is without a storyline, drama, scandals, reporting on deaths and so on and so forth, no one would pay attention. The key task is to make these characters seem as believable as possible. Give them a set of events that will happen and then unleash it on the world stage. The bait, sink and hook method is the oldest trick in the book, but even with how obvious it is, the average person will still not catch it. In fact most will defend it. And then call you crazy. Let's see what else we find. Moving along it's obvious that this would be the case, as we seen and heard in the clip from No Plug, the ante was up, and things got uncomfortable real quick. The way the events played out and how it was explained ties in exactly with 210. It was clear and illustrated the way it is presented here. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out that these incidents are staged, phony and done for a purpose. And the purpose is to create interest and bring about distractions. As previously stated, without these types of stories no one would pay attention. It shouldn't be a surprise that you would be seeing the conclusion bring about obvious death, when it's clear as day it was going to be the case from this character's inception. For all of those who can't seem to wrap your mind around the why. Let's put it to you like this, and it has been stated twice in this video. 
There is only one way to keep people interested, and that's to create a buzz and that includes death, scandals, phony family sacrifice which I still can't fathom how anybody thinks that's the real truth. If family members were being sacrificed or anyone sacrificed, we wouldn't know about it. That narrative was created by the puppet masters. But getting back on track the why is simply because they can, and we pay attention. Yeah.